Kenya has discovered the deposit of coltan, a rare mineral indispensable to the production of the electronic industry. Justin Trudeau of Canada is under fire. After what he did in 2022, the justice system is right behind him. Are they going to make him pay? Did you know that plants could talk to each other? <laughs> Yes, plants could speak to each other. Obviously, what language do they use? Not the human language, in other language. We're gonna find out just now. What's up everybody? I hope you're doing good. It's a beautiful day. Thank you very much for choosing us again today. This is your first time. My name is Zach. I'm sure we're gonna like each other. I don't know who you are, but we will like each other. No doubt about that. Please feel free to click on a button called subscribe, I believe so we can see each other every day, okay? Thank you very much for choosing us. I see you from all over the place. Jamaica, Wagwan, Mi Boss, Tobela, Dumela, Lekai, South Africa, I greet you, Uganda, Jebaleko, Basebo, Nabanyabo, Tanzania, Shikamo, Kenya, VP, Manduguzangu, Rwanda, Amakuru, Bite, Burundi. I see you. Thank you so much for choosing us. I see you from all over the place. Namibia, Uganda, Kenya. So, Kenya has discovered a deposit of the mineral that you all know. It's called coltan. For those of you who don't know, coltan is a very, very important mineral in the development of electronics. This is very necessary for the development of batteries or electric cars, as well as cell phones and telecommunication instruments. So, for the industry to move forward today, they need coltan. And the country that's known with the most reserve of coltan is the DRC, the Democratic Republic of Congo. It's one of the richest countries in the world in terms of mineral, if not the richest country in the world. The DRC has everything. It has gold, diamonds, lithium, coltan, uranium. The uranium needed to bombard Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan was taken to the DRC. Let's get back to Kenya. We're going to see the DRC just now. So now Kenyans are very happy. The deposit of mineral has been found in six counties across the country, but their value is yet to be determined. So everybody knows that DRC is the most coltan. DRC is about 70% of all reserve of coltan in the world. How much does Kenya have? It's going to be very interesting to find out. And Kenya is here, is a map. DRC is here, is a map. These are neighboring countries. And they speak the same language in some areas, which is called Swahili. Kenyans say we will leave our team behind to the ground, thrusting so that we can now begin to assess economical value of the particular mineral. This is the minister saying. Residents of Umbu County in eastern Kenya, one of the six countries with the reserve of mineral, have been advised to hold on to their land. Obviously, I mean, you have a land that's going to produce coltan, which is one of the most sought for right now minerals in the world for technology purpose. Elon Musk is looking for it. He went to Nigeria looking for it. And Nigerian refused to give it to him because they asked him to come and install a plant. Come create a plant here, you know. We don't want to give you raw material. Elon Musk said, no, you guessed it right. Now, the people of Kenya who live in a land where there's potentially tremendous amount of coltan, why would you want to sell your land? You don't want to sell your land. You want to be rich from your stuff. They say precious mineral is found here, and if you want to benefit, you should not sell your land. Neba Miruki, an MP from the county, who was quoted saying by the privately owned East African newspaper. So this is very interesting, fellas. I mean, let's talk about Congo again. DRC is a country that should be known, because if you have a cell phone, you have an iPhone, you have a Samsung, you have electronics, you should be thinking about DRC, because some of the components have come from that land. Unfortunately, it's a country riddled by war. It has about 130 different rebellion groups. Many years ago, in the 1980s, the country was a private property of the Belgian king. Private property, private land. So the king of the Belgians, all the big land in Africa called Congo at the time that was eight times bigger than his country, that is multiple times bigger than his country. And at that time, there was a massive boom of industrial, a massive boom of production. That's the time cars were being produced in mass. So everybody wanted a car. And for each car, they needed wheels, meaning tires. And in order to produce tires, you need a very specific component named rubber. And where do you get rubber? in the forest of the DRC. And many people of the DRC, unfortunately, during that time, had to go through horrendous time because they were forced by the Belgian to go into the forest and get the rubber for the king of Belgium's benefit. The king of the Belgian became very, very rich with exploitation, obviously. Many years later, after independence in 1960s, the Belgians left the DRC. While everybody thought they were independent, 
reality was completely different because there were no jobs, no opportunities, no progress in society. In part, that was also because of some of the leaders that were greedy, wanted to have everything for themselves and their families in the demise of the old population. That was very sad. Today, in 2024, the DRC has gone through many wars. And mainly because of its minerals. Everybody wants to have their hands on the minerals in the DRC. Now, let me give you context. If you come to the DRC looking for coltan for your production, if you come honestly, you need to go to government. By going to government, you're going to have to pay tax honestly. And by paying tax honestly, you're going to pay a big amount of tax in order to access the mineral you're looking for. Now, there's another way to do it. It's to sponsor criminals, to sponsor groups of people with weapons, people who will occupy lands that is rich in coltan. You will sponsor those people to fight the army, to occupy land. Then you will come with your helicopters and aeroplanes in a land that is not controlled by the DRC army. That's exactly what has been happening in the country for about 30 years. Many countries have been accused of using that momentum to enrich themselves. Some Western countries that you know, including some African countries, neighboring countries, stealing minerals from DRC to enrich themselves. Now, my question is this. Congolese people are some of the most nicest people you can find. Some of the happiest Africans you will meet. Very friendly, indeed. They love music. They have Papa Wemba, Kofi Olomide, and many other people. However, the country is still very poor. The social system is inexistent. My worry today is, will Kenya take the root of DRC with this mineral that seems to be like a curse? Coltan. Everybody wants Coltan. Elon Musk wants Coltan. In a country that is peaceful, you find something new. Usually, you see something negative happen very quickly. Is this what's going to happen to Kenya very soon? That's a big question. But in the meantime, we hope that this opportunity will be a good opportunity for the Kenyan people to make some money for themselves and to get jobs so they can move forward and for the economy to progress, provided that no corruption is involved. Here in Canada, Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada, was told by the court that his move in 2022 was unconstitutional. I don't know if you remember, Justin Trudeau implemented some measures that were extremely drastic over the population. Uh, the trackers of Canada were fighting over some measures that were taken by Trudeau. Justin Trudeau imposed people of Canada to do things that he wanted them to do for their own benefit and the trackers of Canada were not happy about that. They came down the street of Ottawa very angry asking Trudeau to stop imposing them things they don't want to do with their own bodies. So what happens when the trackers came together blocking roads, screaming in the street, asking Trudeau to stop and to respect them. The Canadian Prime Minister sent soldiers in the street and policemen to come and arrest these people in the most brutal way possible. And on top of that, he took some measures that many people would think it's North Korea. He blocked many of the trackers' bank account. So, just because you have an opinion in your country and you do not agree with the president, you have your bank account blocked. So you have no access to your money. You cannot provide for your family. So you have people in your family who have needs, but they cannot have the need, even though you have the money, because president does not agree with you. That's what happened to Canadians. Many saw their right broken by the move of Justin Trudeau. Many people try to do go funding uh, account. You know, when you get people to fund you for a benefit, for a cause. The go funding account was blocked because Trudeau asked go funding to block this account. So the money just disappeared. Many people PayPal accounts were blocked. Many people Stripe accounts were blocked. So the credit card doesn't work anymore. You have no money. See, this is one of the reasons why we advocate for cash. Always have cash in hand. Cash is real money. Nobody can take it away from you. Unless they want to beat you up. Or maybe get a right hand from you. Electronic money is not money. They can block it anytime. Now the court has come forward. The Canadian court has ruled that Justin Trudeau government was not justified when it used sweeping power to break up what the Prime Minister called illegal and dangerous protest blockade across the country. Now people were not happy with how things were being run. Do you have the right to say I'm not happy without necessarily being called dangerous and illegal? I don't know. Can you have your own opinion without necessarily being labeled a criminal or something? I don't know. But at that specific time in 2022, Canadians were being jailed for that. In one of the supposedly most democratic countries in the world, Canadians were being jailed for refusing to take the... Yeah. Their account blocked. They go funding rebuked. They strap and PayPal account and credit cards put down. So the judges ruled that Trudeau broke the highest law of the land with the Emergency Act. He caused crisis by dividing people. 
then he violated charter right to illegally suppress citizens. And now Justin Trudeau, being true to himself, uh, first of all, doesn't show up. He sent his spokesperson to speak on his behalf because obviously he doesn't want to face the heat. We were convinced at the time, I was convinced at the time, it was the right thing to do. It was the necessary thing to do. I remain and we remain convinced of that. And they're very adamant. They don't even say they're sorry. No, they don't say they're sorry. Even though court says you were completely wrong by doing what you're doing. Many people believe that Justin Trudeau is one of the most hardest headed presidents ever. He's very conceited, full of himself, look and speak down on people, thinks he knows everything above everybody else. Does being president of a country or prime minister means that you know more than everybody else? Good question. Plants can talk to each other. Yes, scientists have just discovered that plants could speak to one another. This is insane. We've always known that there are many things we don't understand, we don't control. But I think it's necessary we watch this. Plants talk to each other. And when you smell the grass, when you cut the grass, apparently when you cut the grass and you smell that smell, you say, hmm, I like the grass smell. In fact, that is a message from one plant to another saying there's danger. It's a sound of distress. It was the early 1900s. Jagdish Chandra Bose undertook a difficult task. He was a renowned scientist, the father of wireless communication. But Bose had a new challenge, to prove that plants can feel that they are like any other living being. The idea is said to have come to him when he accidentally stepped on a mimosa pudica plant, commonly known as the touch-me-not. Bose was surprised by the leaves folding, so he decided to investigate. What did he find? That plants can breathe, they can reproduce. More importantly, they can feel. Bose's discovery changed the way we look at plants. Wow, plants can breathe, they can reproduce and they can feel. This is crazy. Isn't this the reason why a lot of vegetarians don't want to eat meat? Because to them it's because meat feel, I mean animals feel and they reproduce. So now, is this going to change everything when they hear that plants can feel and breathe and reproduce? What are they going to eat now? I'm just, I'm just curious. Let's go. A century later, we have a long way. We know plants can feel. We know they can even talk. And now scientists in Japan have documented it. They caught plants talking to each other on camera. Plants talking to each other on camera? Wow, we live in a funny world. How did they do that? Of course, they're not using words, but a fine mist that surrounds them. Plants usually have a mist of airborne compounds around them. They are like smells. Plants use them to communicate, like using it to warn of danger nearby. The communication was captured between two sets of plants. One had caterpillars feeding on it, the other was untouched. Wow. The injured plant sent signals to the undamaged neighbours. The signals were detected by a biosensor. It carried calcium ions something even humans use for signaling. Wow. These compounds infiltrate the healthy plant's tissues. That plant then activates its defences. So basically, plants sense danger. They send signals, they warn each other, and they activate their defence mechanism. Doesn't sound much different from humans, and it's not. Fellas, plants can talk. They can feel. So when you cut the onion, it's probably feel as the pain. What are we going to do? What are we going to eat now? I'm very worried. God bless.